Okay. Um, this model represents what structure? A long butt. Less than a lobe. Uh, just a little uh, lobule. Okay. There's more than one alveolar sac. I mean, here, see that? That's an alveolar sac. By the way, does this pointer show up okay? Okay. That's an alveolar sac. See, around the single antrum, and we have the various alveoli that all open into this one antrum. Okay? And this alveolar sac, then, is at the end of, if I turn it on around, you can see they show alveolar ducts quite nicely here. Okay? Now, the thing that's confusing on this model is we have learned about the anatomy of uh, the circulatory system in the lung, haven't we? And we know that this vessel here, next to the airway, must be a what? An artery, huh? And what color is it? And what color should it be? Blue. Because it should be carrying what? Deoxygenated blood being carried down to the alveoli. Okay, and we see the little capillary networks on the alveoli here. To do the oxygen exchange, and the carbon dioxide exchange, a little bit in today's lecture, big time in next lecture, okay? And then that blood gathers back together, comes over here into this vessel, which is the pulmonary, pulmonary vein. vein, which should be red. nice and bright red. So you understand the mistake on the way this is made. Um, it, it shows, okay, the airway coming down, and this would be a what? Bronchus. Because what's this blue stuff? <coughs> Highland cartilage. And as we get down to the smaller bronchi, we have plates of cartilage. Somewhere down here, the, the, the cartilage goes away. And as soon as the cartilage goes away, these, these airways are what? Bronchioles. And then they become respiratory bronchioles and then alveolar ducts. Okay. What this model also shows of importance to us is this nice bright red vessel here. They're showing it redder than this one, just so to delineate it, I think, so you can see it. And this small bright red vessel coming down, and see it goes along here under the pleura, and, and along the different septa and stuff. What do you think that bright red vessel is? The bronchial artery, yes. See, this is the bronchial artery bringing food, bringing oxygen down to, carrying carbon dioxide away from these cells that aren't being serviced by air coming in and out of the lungs. We think you don't need to take oxygen to the lungs, but there are places that you do need uh, to take, to which you do need to take oxygen. Say my grammar right for this tape. Okay, that makes sense? Okay, nice model that cost $514 on sale for $4.99 if you can find it on sale. Okay? Wasn't that about 20 years ago? <laughs> the structure represented by this model is the what? The what? The throat. <laughs> I'm hearing all kinds of different answers. Well, what do you want? It's a larynx. Oh, okay. It's a larynx. How many cartilages make up a larynx? Nine. Nine. Okay. This one, which is the epiglottis. epiglottis. This one, which is the thyroid. This one, which is the Cricoid comes all the way around. Okay, those are the three single ones. One, two, three. Epiglottis, thyroid, cricoid. Then we kind of look inside, and we see these two that swivel. They are the what? Arytenoids. Two of those. And then on top are these two little crowns. And the crowns are called what? Corniculate. I saw you look at your notes. That's partner. right. Those are the corniculate <laughs> cartilages. Okay? And then between the arytenoid and the epiglottis, there's a fold of tissue. The fold of tissue, listen to my words, 
The fold of tissue between the retinoid and the epiglottis is called the airy epiglottic fold. It's a description as much as it is a name. And not on this model, but part way up, about where the tip of the pointer is, is a little linear piece of cartilage that helps keep that airy epiglottic fold shape, called the cuneiform. See? So you have two cuneiforms, two corniculates, two arytenoids, one thyroid, one cricoid, and one epiglottis. That's nine cartilages. Okay? Part of the function, part of how this thing works is this way. Okay? These arytenoids swivel. They turn. And as they swivel, as they turn, they can open and close the glottis. Open, close. And they can increase and decrease the pressure. Now, they open and close the glottis. That's very important. They, they increase and decrease the pressure. Apparently, there's more involved than that. Okay? Increasing and decreasing the pressure on those vocal folds changes the pitch of your voice. <laughs> okay? You can run the pressure up and make it vibrate fast. Or you can run the pressure down and let it vibrate slow. But there's another thing to it. There's another thing to that pitch. And if you put your fingers on your larynx and, make, and just hum a high pitch. Feel it go up? Okay. I think as it goes up that that stretches the vocal cords and 